today we are concluding not conclusion in the sense of finality that there is nothing else to be said but in the sense of a series that we had begun a series on the devourer this month has been a month if nothing else of opening your eyes to see the activities to see the reality to see the the workings of the devourer the devourer wastes it brings waste upon your life devourer makes hard work without results devourer makes journey motion without speed devourer keeps one in set back always going back to the same old place and never being able to break out break through and move forward devourer brings about reduction in size so devourer reduces reduces the devourer brings about stagnation the devourer ties you to a place and keeps you there forever so there are relationships that are devourers giving false sense of hope giving false promise and just tying you down there many years ago when after the the movement started in Ibom Hall God brought a young woman into my life because into the ministry life because she worked at that time in a radio station that I used to I used to go minister live and she's one of the most amazing spirits I've met in a public space you move into places and you meet spirits that are very irritating and you just feel for them and pray for them I met two people in that place. One eventually became a member here. And, um, and then this other person had been a distant member until we left Ibom Hall. An amazing person, a daughter of a pastor, an amazing person by all standards. So each time I would go to that place to work, to minister, her exceptional honor and respect and respectfulness. And eventually I realized she was coming to Grace Family and she got to have a counseling moment with me and sought spiritual direction concerning relationship. I noticed that she was tied down. She was tied down. Even at that point, I had somebody in my life that I was praying for for marriage, somebody in my circle, that I saw that she could be a great, a great blessing. I prayed about it, so I told him, well, there is this person, there is somebody um, that I know is looking for a great, godly, amazing person like you. Will you mind if I make introduction and let the person pray about you, and you pray about the person? And she said no. Um, she was into something. In, eventually she brought she brought the person and met me and we talked in those days in Ibom Hall what I could sense and understood from all of this was an arrangement to tie a great gift down and our we've not been in communication in a long while but as at the last time she sent me a message which I did not respond to is that she needs deliverance I'm sure she needs it because it has taken up beyond what she would have imagined but i knew it and i saw it and there are certain things you don't know how to communicate there are certain things you don't know how to communicate amazing person tied down and wasted tied down not by force by with our own with our own contribution with our own contribution what you could call that kind of relationship is devouring relationship relationship devouring her time devouring her value a woman has a window for many things men not in any way of gender superiority is just about gender sensitivity that is this is what what i'm going to say is about it's not about gender superiority a maleness is not superior to femaleness a man is not in any way superior to a woman Whoever thinks that way is a sick person. Our ancient thought that way and they were wrong. So it is not about 
It's not about superiority of one over another. It's about sensitivity that makes you have a perspective about one that is different from the perspective about another. That makes you relate and treat matters in one way different from the other. A man has a very large window of life. Very large window of life. And that window enjoys elasticity. That window can actually keep expanding. But a woman has a window that does not naturally enjoy both that largeness and elasticity. In many areas, in many areas, as it pertains to marriage and family, as it pertains to marriage and family, the woman's window from from biological standpoint, physiological standpoint, and many, many perspectives, a woman has a window. So a woman needs wisdom more than a man needs wisdom in living. A man, so when I say woman needs wisdom, it's, a, it's still a word that one can say, you know, in this era of being careful of what you say, so that it's not regarded as sexist or misogynist stick or something, but it's just to make it clear that you need wisdom. You need wisdom as a woman and you need wisdom as a man. When it comes to something of relationship and marriage and settling down, I feel the operating person is not a man, is a woman. I feel the operating person who should control, who should, lead, who should lead and not be led. What I mean lead in the sense of choosing which direction to go choosing that's what leadership is about whether it's a, it's, we are going this way or going this way it cannot be left for a man it should be something for a woman to know is this where i will want to go is this where i will want to go it cannot be a man he said well if you want to if you like to no it cannot be it should be something you take responsibility because your window your window does not enjoy absolute largeness and does not enjoy great level of elasticity so if you don't enjoy the grace and the help of wisdom to work profitably in the window that is available you have a life of regrets waiting for you i'm talking about divara because every day i come up here there is a sense that god wants you to communicate to pass across that is to help build somebody. There are relationships that do not have any other value other than reducing you, wasting you in terms of your time and your precious window as a woman. The precious window as a woman. A precious window as a woman. That means at every point in time, you have to know what are you giving consent to? What are you saying yes to? And I tell people this, when I'm, when I'm preparing people for marriage, I am very harsh with men. And I, I am more, I'm tempted to be more difficult with a man. And when a woman feels I'm not helping them in their way of getting married, I will always remind her, I'm doing this because of you. I'm trying to push this man to, know, to find out whether this is a fool that does not deserve you and should not lock your future down or whether this is a man of your destiny. Because in life, your choices will determine your future one way or another. I pray in the name of Jesus. I don't know why this is coming up. For a woman whether a young woman who at this stage does not know the implication of being a woman, a woman who just enjoys youthfulness and youngness, but does not understand the implication of foolish decisions that can be used by the devourer to devour your best time, your best season. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that the devourer of time the devourer of value has left you as a man and has left you as a woman in the name of Jesus. The devourer of your prime time. What devours men in their prime? What devours women in their prime? What devours men in their prime at the, the most 
the most productive and able and prosperous season of your time. The most glorious and elegant season of their life. What ties you down and does not let you move forward? What wastes you? What reduces your value? What collapses you down? What causes you to implode, to fall in and not break out? I speak that they have devoured in the name of Jesus. Every daughter of Zion in this house I release you from a devouring relationship. No matter how your emotion is entangled, no matter how powerful the grip is in your life, I speak that you are released. Every man that is being devoured in terms of the time of your productivity, the time of your result, the time of your making it and standing out, what devours your time and attention, what devours your concentration and dedication, I speak by the fire of God that it is devoured in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Be seated, be seated. And this, I'm sure a lot of people can relate with this. A lot of people can relate with this. Women who have children early, they enjoy advantage over those who have children later. In terms of ability to recover body, emotionally, mentally, and in every area. In terms of being able to endure certain things and certain pains and avoiding certain, certain complications, the younger, the better, as long as one has come to the maturity for such business. So what I'm trying to say is that if you have a younger person as a sister, as a daughter, who is a girl, please begin to have conversation about early maturity and early sensitivity about time. Time. Not to create panic and make one uncomfortable and feel like one is being rushed. No. It's about being aware. Just knowing. If some of us knew years back what we now know, our lives, the outcome of our lives will have been different. I know it at 55. I know it's struggling in many areas that I'm beginning to learn new and in order to navigate through the maze of life that if we knew certain things earlier, our journeys will have been better. The earlier, the better in terms of learning and in terms of recovery. I pray in the name of Jesus that again, your beautiful moment will not be stolen and devoured and that foolishness will not give your advantage to the enemy in Jesus name first Peter chapter 5 and verse 8 to 10 be sober be vigilant so what I'm trying to talk about is being sober as a young woman being sober as a young man and many young men at a particular age I remember when I was 28 I remember when I was 13 to 35 sometimes I would just sit down and run through the seasons of my life and look at each of those seasons certain features certain abilities in my life that I did not know the implication that it was something that was age specific at this stage Wisdom is setting in, you know, a lot of recollection, a lot of, of going back to understand perspectives. And so we can speak to those who are coming behind with an understanding that you don't need to come and have certain experiences in order to know what you should know. That you should leverage the experience of those who have gone ahead. That's what mentorship does. That's what mentorship does. So all I'm trying to say here is that be sober concerning issues of the devourer of time, of faces of life. There are people who enter life making wealth early. 
And if they can trace the pattern, they will say, oh, my father made wells early. My father, my mother started early. But what happened after that? There was no wisdom, no sobriety, no vigilance to know how to translate that early opportunity into lasting prosperity. Because of that ignorance, one opening the door for the devourer to devour. And so the one whose father was devoured in the great season of life that was never able to recover is likely if you the person say, oh i'm breaking out early i'm making it early i'm doing this early and so you have to watch you have to that person has to watch a, a little girl of 18 that i met in the school of the holy spirit yesterday i just oh how, how old are you i got interested i'm i'm 18 and i say we Life is preservation. May you be preserved. I prayed for her. Kneel down. I prayed for her. But I told her, meet me. I don't meet people like that in a session of the spirit without a purpose. By the time she sat down with me, it just turns out everything she said had to play out and play into what I saw in my spirit to tell her, you will be preserved from the things that are coming. And all she says that every day I am broken. I am crying. When will I stop crying? And she's just 18. And he's talking about what she's going through because of this. And he's centered around family. And I'm talking about my elder sister is just two years older than me. This is what is happening. And then all the traces and all the stuffs are already trying to prepare her. I said, oh, so this is what I talked about. Preserving from what is coming. And connecting that to the mother. And talking about the pain she goes through because she has nobody to look up to. Be vigilant. Be sober. Because what devout those of the past... They have not changed their mind. They want to devour those of the present. And that's not where they end. They want to devour those in the future. So when you make a mistake, you give a gift to those in the future. You are saying, Ufong, you know, we see Kaninam. So you say, a, re, a reinforcement of a pattern. So we are the generation of, this, of sobriety. This, we are the, the generation of vigilance. We are the generation of turnaround. We are the generation of redemption. So that because of you, somebody can say, that in my family, somebody is able to do it. Because the success of another person encourages and emboldens one other person for success. The failure of one sets the other one up to struggle to fight against what has already been projected. I pray in the name of Jesus that you are the generation turn around. I pray in the name of Jesus that in matters of the devourer die, devouring people in their prime devouring people in their best time devouring people in their early days devouring people in their prime devouring people in their best days that you are the generation of glorious turn around you are sober you are vigilant and you prevail in the name of Jesus Christ be sober, be sober, be vigilant because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. Resist him. So we have been talking about resisting. And we say resisting is stand up against him. We stand him, oppose him, oppose him, stand against him. Stand so strong that he comes to hit you. You still remain standing and he goes back and falls apart. Stand with God. Stand in God and stand for God and oppose him. That is the recommendation. Not AK-47. Not a machete. Not an arrow. A bell. Nothing. He says stand. So how are you going to stand? How are you going to stand? By the grace of God, what we build there, it was properly built. The day or the nights leading to the day that we went to Oro for a great outreach, there was something very unfortunate that happened. A great storm and a palm tree that had been standing there did not fall. It was like dug around, removed and thrown. So that if you go and look at it, it just looked like for a long time, somebody has been cutting it intentionally to remove it. And this fell around about 9.30 in the night. And it fell 
straight on the roof and the wall of the restroom area of the women. So when I came in and I saw it, I came later that night back to this place and I saw it. The first thing I thought about, oh, thank God, nobody was there at that point. Number two, the integrity of the wall. Has it cracked anywhere? And that moment I gave God thanks for every process of getting to build. The wood on the roof, they were not affected. They were so strong. And then the wall with all the impacts, not a crack, nothing. Absolutely nothing. Now, what actually happened is that a devourer in a palm tree came falling. If it was just a tent, it will flatten and anything that was on the other side will have to be unearthed for burial. It came strong. It came intending to bring down. All that happened is that the wall stood. It withstood it. I don't know where I'm communicating. What actually happened is that the roof resisted. He said, yes, you have come, but I stand. I stand means you don't have your way. I stand means, yes, I have been attacked, but I am not broken. Yes, I have been tempted, but I am not brought down. Yes, uh, you have come like a floor, but the Holy Ghost has raised a standard. Yes, you have come in one direction, but you are scattered in seven directions. That is what it means to attack the devourer hold every holy ghost fire shouting the blood of jesus and shouting the name of jesus all of that if you don't have what it takes to stand the name of jesus avails nothing so on the day of issue the name of jesus needs a vessel to walk in why do we prepare you through teaching? Is so that on that day when you call the name of Jesus, the scripture says the power that is at work within you. Come on, come on, come on, come on. And we are talking about the power that's not at work in within your pastor. The power. So what God used to preserve you on the day of issue that things fall upon you. It's not the power that is at work in your pastor. It's not the power that is at work in your neighbor. It's the power that is at work where was the name. That's what the name of Jesus uses for your deliverance. That is why we teach. That is why we preach. That is why after we sing and we pray, we have to study and we have to learn the revelation of the word. The only recommendation is resist him. That is what you resist him. That's verse 9. Stand up against him. And we have said that the requirement for standing is strength. That's all. And go back to the issue of a palm tree falling, falling on our roof and our wall. And he stayed there for, for hours before it was cut down and removed and everything the integrity of the roof the integrity of the wall nothing why it was strong it is strong the woods with which the, the roof had been made they were serious woods and the wall the whole process they were seriously made it was made to endure and so it stood without a crack so if you go through that place and check it has not been plastered there was no way to go back to the wall to try to mend anything you go through you may never know that something like that happened strength the only secret of standing against and resisting the devourer is what strength and by the grace of God this devourer we are talking about you should know that this devourer is not your grandmother is not your father-in-law it's not your boss it's not your terrible neighbor or your landlady your landlord or your your fellow tenant that is ungodly and terrible we are dealing with the devil the devourer the adversary the devil walks about uh, looking for whom to devour that's it so you need spiritual strength 
The devil is not matched with financial strength. Your financial strength can be translated into spiritual strength to stand against the devil. But your money in the account does not stand against the devil. Your father in the Lord, your godfather or godmother, they don't, they don't, they don't. It is your strength. It is your strength. No matter how, no matter how, your strength is what things will fall on. Marriage will be built on your strength. The day there is an issue in your marriage, and if you are not strong enough to stand, your father in the law, your prophet will not you will not. When something happens with your children, something happens in your office and I, I will help you in prayer. I will intercede for you. I will pray for you. But you need your own emotional strength, your mental strength, your attitudinal strength, the strength of your attitude to stay unfaced in the face of evil. To stay with stamina no one will work for you in that office there is no way somebody will come and leave a pastor will not come and live with you in an in an accommodation that you are under attack no way it is your strength that will stand and resist the devil during that season your strength so the basic requirement is spiritual strength Ephesians we have been talking about this. I will not just come and jump on the next thing without reminding you. Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 10 to 11. Verses 10 and 11. Ephesians chapter 6. Finally, my brethren, be strong, not in your gary and soup. Be strong, not in your boyfriend. Be strong, not in your girlfriend. Be strong, not in your uh, relationship with those in authority. Be strong, not in your money in the account. Be strong, not in your pastor and your church. Be strong, where? Come on, come on. Be strong, where? Do you have a place in the Lord? That is your strength. Do you have a place of sacrifice? Where you sacrifice in the Lord and for the Lord. Where you are dedicated in the Lord and for the Lord. Where you serve in the Lord and for the Lord. Where you grow in the Lord and for the Lord. This is it. It is in the Lord. The church is the called out. Those called out to have their place in the Lord. The church is ecclesia. Ecclesia. Those ekkalo. Those who are called out of. Called out of stuffs. Uh, to be in the Lord. To have their strength in the Lord. In Jeremiah it says, Let the one who will boast. Uh, not boast of his strength. Of his wisdom. Of his might. Uh, let him the who, who will boast. Boast in the fact that he knows me. He knows me. The word know in Hebrew, in biblical knowledge, is koital. Koital in the sense of with the with the the the, the, the insinuation and um, an implication of sexual relationship. The word when you get Adam knew his wife. This is what we are talking about. We are talking about intimacy. We are talking about bonding. So when God said let him boast in the fact that he knows me means that he is in me and I am in him. Let him boast in the fact that he is so close to me that he perceives my smell and I know him for I know my servant Moses. Moses had to be defended by God when Miriam and the other began to rebel against him. He said, you don't do that. Every other prophet, I communicate in dreams. I communicate with them through dreams and visions, but not my servant Moses. I speak with him face to face. That is knowledge. It is in that wise that the scripture says his eyes were not dim. He knew something in God. He knew something of longevity, of recovery and ability in God. So we are talking about intimacy. Intimacy is your private capital, spiritual capital in God. Please write it down. Your intimacy with God is your spiritual capital. Sir, when we talk about capital, 
we are talking about what we have to make transaction to bring about other things you can whatever that is available as a result of which you can have another thing that you are looking for that is capital that is a, so when we talk about intimacy is a spiritual capital of a kind that means through intimacy you have access to an array of spiritual and divine resources you can touch what is not your own because at the end of the life is about who you relate with if you relate with a dirty person you touch dirt if you relate with a foolish person you touch foolishness if you relate with a strong person you touch strength so a relationship gives you access so when the scripture says let him that boast not boast of these and that and that let him boast in just this that he knows me that means he has intimacy with me that means he has some kind of sexual relationship with me in the sense of exchange of giving and taking communion and fellowship they say the love of God the grace of our Lord Jesus God the love of God and the fellowship that by the Holy Spirit you have intimacy by which you can say I know that is what makes people preserve keeps people preserved through the season of the devourer and Job will shout I know that my redeemer is not there I know that my redeemer is not asleep I know I know means I, I relate to it by closeness by touching and being touched that my redeemer lived that on the last I shall see him no other but I in the flesh shall see him this is what keeps me alive sir where is your place in God what is your place in God strength is in that place therefore finally be strong not outside the law finally be strong not about the law some people boast about uh, their knowledge uh, but they are not in the law some people boast about their pastors uh, but not in the law some people boast about the church uh, but not in the law some people boast about their goodness and righteousness uh, but not in the law so finally my brethren be strong glory to God say I am strong in the law rise to your feet and lift up your two hands say I take possession of my portion in the Lord say I take possession of my place in the law say I take possession of my resources in the law say I take possession of my holiness in the Lord say I take possession of my righteousness in the law say I take possession of my ability in the law say I take possession of my elasticity in the law no matter how I am bent I am not broken I am elastic I recover I'm strong enough to fall back to rise back I have anastasis in me if by the same power Romans 8 11 if by the spirit of him if the spirit of him that raised Christ from the dead dwelleth in you he that raised him he that raised him he that raised Christ from the dead will also do something he will give life he will quicken he will zawo he will end the war he will give you life in him he will give you strength and vigor in him say i am strong in the lord i take my place in the lord i take my portion in the law say i'm no longer just going to stand and see my place in the lord and hear about my place in the law and study about my place in the law say i am in my place i enter my place i accept my place my place in holiness my place in righteousness 
my place in concentration my place in dedication my place in ability my place in strength finally i am strong in the lord shout jesus finally you are strong in the lord glory to god be seated this is how you stand against the devourer that does not repent. The devourer that cannot be persuaded. The devourer that cannot be persuaded. The devourer that cannot be converted. Sir, you can never convert the devil. If you are converted by the devil, it means he has killed you. But you will never change him from hating you. You will never change him from seeking to destroy you. You will never change him from walking about paripatio. Walking about with one purpose in mind to devour to devour means to reduce uh, to devour means to waste uh, the requirement is strength uh, and colossians i gave this scripture last week it's just that when i bring out these scriptures uh, i'm not preaching and teaching i am ministering and imparting for i am longing to meet you in order to bring about some spiritual impact spiritual impartation by which there will be departation of evil that things that devour your strength will depart and they depart will from you at the coming and the invasion of the strength of God so in Colossians 1 9 10 11 for this reason we also since the day we heard it do not cease to pray for you and to ask that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding that you may walk worthy of the law fully pleasing him being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God Paul is not talking about we're praying for you that you may know the witches and wizards in your family that we're praying for you so that you will know the person in your family who is in conspiracy in witchcraft coven to bring you down those things are useless if you have spiritual understanding and you are fully pleasing to the Lord if God be for us, swear to me. If God be for us, if you like, shout to me. If God be with us, if God be for us, if you like, insult me. But just tell me something as a response. If God be for us, show me a wizard, show me a wish, show me a devil. Show me a devilish, show me a devilish, show me a demon and a demoness, a female demon and a male demon. Just show me the account as nothing. Wait in the scale of divine strength. If God be for us, who is it that can stand? Who can be? You are not a victim. At this point, you can no longer play a victim. You have to become the aggressor. That whatever devour me, I devour you. Why? I am strong in the Lord. Because by the strength of the Lord, you are set up to devour what devours you. That is what the scripture says in Jeremiah. I will devour those uh, who will devour you. And it will be by the power that is at work within you. Glory to God. Say, I'm not afraid of my own strength. I'm not afraid of my position in God. Say, I love my position in God. I accept my place in God. All of you are operating from God, outside God. And as a stranger coming to peep in church, to hear what we are saying about God, I pity you now. <laughs> because you have no value, past, present, future. What we are up against and what is standing against us has no understanding of your age that you are a child I told you how I talked to a little girl yesterday how many people have been abused from the very first month abused in their early age and that, that trailed them and followed them and traumatized them the whole of their life a young woman sitting in front of me
crying married to one of the best pastors uh, and crying knowing that she is a torment to this person she, but she just cannot understand how she can be different uh, and the only reason traced to her is the early ages the devil used structures using responsibility in parenting to get at a princess somebody was designed for great life and wasted her life and wasted her days and made the husband miserable a devil does not care about your age jesus was just few weeks old when the devil came through herod and young little infants paid the price from a particular age till month zero so you cannot say i'm young i can operate from outside to be strong in the law verse 10 of colossians 1 it says that you may walk worthy of the law fully pleasing him being fruitful in every good work and increase in the knowledge of god this is what matters this is this is paul a pastor praying an apostle praying for his for his flock it's not making reference to witches and wizards it's not singing who is their trouble he's not worried about demons he's the one who pens Ephesians chapter 6 from verse 10 we're not fighting against him from verse 12 down against principalities and power but again but we are not fighting against flesh and blood we are fighting against principalities and power but that same man is not obsessed he didn't tell them know the name of witches and wizard in those days when we see some deliverance book he say the names of demons operating in river niger zoko zoko tom like so you know them there are seven in the east of river niger and seven sir and you say you are spiritual and you know so much of them now tell me about god just just can you just know something about jesus and tell me for that is salvation if i know the savior do i need to worry about what i'm saved from if I know the deliverer, do I need to study what I'm delivered from? Sir, who goes to school just to study the tumor that was taken from his body? Is it because, you know, that tumor? Why is it? Do you want to help others? No, I just want to know that thing that troubled me. So I have to see. I'm no longer an architect. I stop all my trade. And I'm going to school to see the, to know the, sir, whatever has been taken from me, somebody will tell me, can I show you the photograph of what was taken from my womb? I said, no. I don't want to know. I already know the one who spared you. That is enough. There are too many ugly things I've seen. And I don't want to add that one to the profile of ugly things. I have memory that brings me remembrance of many things. I don't want to remember that one. I want just tell me about the name of the one that preserved you. Sir, so I want to know that one. So somebody said I was abused by my husband and he beats me up. I took photographs. Shall I show you? I said no. Don't show me. I already know many bruised faces and many terrible things in life. I don't want to add that one. Tell me how God has preserved you and how God is preserving you. And tell me about the God that can change your husband, the, the name of the Lord that can restore your marriage and make an, a woman abuser into a woman carer or caregiver, whichever one you want. You are too obsessed. You don't you are not obsessed with somebody was talking yesterday in a, a list, I was listening to somebody talking about binge reading the word of God. You don't binge on the word of God, you binge on the name of demons and witches in your family. And people coming to know say, Did you know that the other girl is also a witch? Did you know that the other boy is also did you even know that the other one too has did you even know, sir? Tell me, did you know the new things about you? Because the word of God says that it is in this time that through the church God that God is displaying to the devil the many sidedness of his wisdom 
the many anchors of his wisdom. So tell me new things you have understood in the name of Jesus. Tell me new things you have understood in the Savior and the Deliverer. Tell me new things you have discovered in the message and compassion and the goodness of the Lord. So tell me about the salvation of God. Tell me new insights and new rema you have penned down. Don't worry me about new nonsense. They are not new before God. God knows them. The scripture has given you an understanding. They are called principalities and power. If they are not there, they are called host of wickedness in the heavenly places. That is enough. Whatever it is, I'm not interested in seeing their ugly faces. Say, I saw a demon. So you were here. You didn't see a demon. Shut up. I see the goodness of the law in the land of the living. The word of God says, I shall see the goodness. Come on, come on, tell me. He said, I shall see the goodness of the Lord. Where? In the land of the living. So excuse me if I have not seen the demon that is troubling you. Excuse me. Excuse me if I am not able to see the demon that is troubling you. Because seeing the demon that is troubling you does not solve any problem. As long as you see the might of God. As long as you see the power of God. As long as you see the footman in the fire. It does not matter the intensity of the fire. If Nebuchadnezzar likes it, let him double the fire. Double the intensity and the horror of the fire. If they like it, those who are coming to throw you into the fire, let them be roasted by the fire with that assurance that if we are roasted everyone thrown into the fire will be roasted as long as you can see the fourth man in the fire glory to god i'm talking about the prayer of an apostle i'm talking so because this is how we know the issues of god these are men who were taken to the third heaven who had things that are unutterable men who saw things that are not they are not permitted to explain and the way when they come down from that heavenly place listen to how they pray listen to the prayer they pray what matters in the prayer he said that you may walk with god worthy of the lord fully pleasing him being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of god verse 11 strengthen with what all might we talked about this now today i want to share with you very briefly in addition the next secret we talked about strength is as a result of food and as a result of exercise Acts of Apostles chapter 20 verse 32. So now brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and give you an inheritance. The word of God builds you up. When we are talking about if the word of God builds you up, it means you are as strong as the word of God. Now listen to me. A, a man builds something according to his capacity. That's why we have Julius Beja. That is why we have CCC. That is why we have um, 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 RCC. That is why we we have uh, we have NSEC. <laughs> that is why certain projects in the city is not NSEC because men build according to their capacity. Am I communicating? Now let me tell you something. When the word of God builds you, everything being equal, you are equal to the strength of the word of God. When Julius Beja, do you know the reason? Why after people have built something, they leave the signage of their companies there so that people will know to what extent is this thing strong. So as you come to a place, you say, oh, this is Julius Beja's strength. And you come to this one, oh, oh, this is NSEC strength. Oh, and this, you come to this one, this is the word strength. Come on. I don't know where I'm talking to somebody. You say, this is what? The word strength. So the word of God able to build you up. Give me that scripture. Able to build you up. So after the word of God has built your marriage, the word of God leaves the signage there. Built by God. After the word of God has built you in your health, the word of God leaves a signage there. Built by the word. Fabricated by the word. Orchestrated by the word. Made by by the word nothing was made that was not made so the word of god is in the business of making so the word of god is not for argument i wish them good luck who use the word of god for argumentation to argue about their doctrine doctrine core doctrine knee doctrine saves who saves nobody what saves somebody when i'm talking doctrine i'm not talking doctrine in the original sense of the teaching the word doctrine actually means teaching but the way it is used in a sense of it is a peculiar 
teaching of a congregation. What makes one congregation carry a face of superiority? And there are people in that congregation they walk around with foolish arrogance that they are better than others. That's not salvation. It's what building you. What build? In the ancient Roman Empire, I've told you this, this before, when bridges were built by engineers, on the day of the inauguration of the bridge, when for the first time, things and people, equipment and all of that will, be, will have to walk and cross the bridge, the man who built the bridge has to stand under the bridge. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> You have to stand under the bridge. If you build the bridge on the day, we are testing the bridge with all the load that is available. You are not among those who are on top of the bridge. You are standing under the bridge. And if there is any contractor who took money to supply certain things, if they are, you tell them, come and stand with us. We are, we are in this together. If by the end of it, your bridge stands, you are the first person delivered and saved. If your bridge falls, don't worry. You are the first person crush. <laughs> Before we come from above to see you down, nobody will even see you. You are gone. Sir, when the word of God is being tested over your life, the word of the scripture says the word of God has been tested and proven seven times. It's been, it's, been, it's been discovered to be reliable. Abraham built upon his word and he prospered. Isaac did not go to Egypt as his father because the word said he should not. And he prospered. And it was by the word that Jacob went and survived the ordeals of Laban and came back with Joseph the eleventh son and made him coat of many colors because God had appeared to him at loose that he renamed Bethel and told him I am the God of your fathers Abraham Isaac and Jacob this land upon which you rest as a runaway I will give to you so that was the word and so when Joseph was born he told Laban I am returning for my destiny is not to be outside for long I go back may the world build you the second thing that gives you strength what the word is food and the next thing i told you is exercise spiritual food is the word of god the word of god is a spiritual food that you eat upon which you walk 40 days to the mountain the next thing is spiritual exercise shout spiritual exercise let's try and find out the meaning of the word exercise let's look at hebrews chapter 5 verse 12 to 14 hebrews chapter 5 from verse 12 to 14 for though by this time you ought to be teachers rise to your feet say i am strong say i am i am strong by the spirit of god say i am strong to stand against the devourer say as i stand i'm too strong for the devourer say i come back to my purity i can right, raise your look to hand say i come back to my place in god i come back to my strength in god i come back to my life in god i come back to my recovery in god i come back to my strength in god i come back to my wisdom in god shout jesus be seated for though by this time you ought to be teachers you need someone to teach you again the first principles of the oracles of God and you have come to need milk not solid food for everyone who partakes only of milk is unskilled in the word of righteousness for he is a baby but solid food belongs to those who are full of age continue reading with me that is those who by reason of what? By reason of use have their senses continue exercise to discern both good and evil. Oh, wonderful. Solid food brings about two things. Use and exercise. Now the word use, the word use in Greek is hexis. Hexis. H E. X-I-S H-E-X-I-S Hex 
axes. The word axes, which is translated use in King James Version of the Bible and New King James Version of the Bible, the word use actually means practice. So that scripture reads this way. Those who by reason of practice have their, their senses exercised to descend. So the word exercise means to practice. Practice. The word practice has to do with repeated action that brings about custom and abuse habits. Repeat. So the word practice has to do with what you repeat Deadly do. Practice is repeated action. The difference between professional footballers and the neighborhood Saturday warriors, the neighborhood Saturday weekend warriors, they go to the pitch, they do both practice and um, and what the tournament. So do they do the practice in the tournament like when we say we are playing novelty match somebody who used to play in primary school will come jumping <laughs> he said in those days i will every time i kick once i score twice with one kick <laughs> and they will jump so what happens is that they come to practice during that novelty match after 15 minutes they sit down somewhere and breathe and breathe and breathe but a professional what sets them apart is during re during holiday they are practicing they live in gym they are traveling on yachts sailing in the ocean but they are in the gym they are practicing people like ronaldo they have talked about their work ethics that when they return from a match everybody is going to rest ronaldo is going to make ice pack and is trying to bandage stuff he's threatening up in order to go ahead and people like Messi playing with their dogs and dribbling with their dogs and their children these are people who turn practice into fun sir it is physical practice that leads to physical strength what you repeatedly do to your body in the area of building strength is what assures your strength after eating good food what do you do repeatedly after you hear the word of God let's assume you have heard the word of God what do you do repeatedly your practice this is what will make you strong so people don't hear they say i am born again say i'm born again i'm born again i give my life to christ i give my life to christ i am no longer a sinner i'm no longer a sinner i forsake all my sick i forget all my sin jesus come into my life just come into my life after that one month later you do nothing two months later you do nothing i went through school of the holy spirit <laughs> praise god i have diploma in advanced spirituality and pneumatology by the grace of god i know about Rua. i know about this and that one month later you do nothing two months later you do nothing sir the devil will come at you taiwa sir do you know what i'm talking about the devil will use you to eat cassava mong mong iwa iwa that is soaked in the water so it's so easy to come ibad e kama ibad e tam mong iwa mong iwa mong so the devil just uses you like ibad to eat the next iwa can i tell you something what you do repeatedly is what defines you sir habit can i tell you something your secret at in success or failure is in your habit so what is your habit the things you do repeatedly to the extent that you are no longer aware that you do it almost everyone here has the habit of checking phone when there is no reason to check phone so you just pick up your phone as i'm preaching you just feel like you are bored you pick up your phone and you just open the last thing you saw is what you are seeing now nothing new you are not expecting any transaction are you expecting any transaction no you are not expecting anybody you are not giving anybody money and you are not receiving money from anybody but you just checked phone. why you have done it so repeatedly that it has reached what is called automaticity that means it becomes automata it has a life of its own it has its own life that means it just does it when it is time it will just tell you check your phone and you check your phone <laughs> after some time it will do you check your phone sir if you build practice around the word of god after some time in the time of stress check the work and you check the work <laughs> when you are in trouble 
check the wall and you check the wall when you are depressed check the wall and you check the wall when you are distressed check the wall and you are, sir, i'm talking about you sir am i am i communicating sir use is practice what is it that you practice such that when everybody is focused on something and they are distracted by something that thing Mm, check it that is your practice sir the word of god says in order to be strong when the scripture says the word of god will build you up and give you inheritance among the saints the only way the word of god will build you up and give you inheritance among the saints you have to practice the word you have to build repeated actions around the world <laughs> studying the word revisiting what you studied memorizing what you studied applying what you studied praying what you studied meditating on what you studied sharing what you studied posting what you studied that means you build a whole range of practice of activities repeatedly around the world that's what gives you strength that's what gives you strength that's what gives you strength it is not hearing the word of god that gives you strength it is making the word of god practice that a day you say i cannot go to church because i don't have enough money if i use this 500 naira this 1000 naira and go to church what will i eat and you want to sit down and rest and the practice will hit you what go and hear the word and so you show up in church you are angry coming but when i had your word i devoured your word your word was unto me food you are delighting in the word and you sit down and the word comes to strengthen you the word comes to build you and the word gives you a portion among the sanctified what that means is that on the day of shame your own portion among do, is among those who have been lifted on the day of distress your own portion your name is found among the promoted on the day of depression your own portion your name is found among those who are lifted it is the word of God that has built you and the word of God that has become your practice 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 say practice practice this is the secret of spiritual strength practice so what are the things you practice practice brings about constancy whatever you repeatedly do you become constant in it whatever you it brings about continuity whatever you repeatedly do it brings about continuousness you will always do what you have always done it brings about repetition it, you will always repeat what you have always repeated so you can predict the future of somebody by studying what the person does repeatedly so you don't marry somebody without knowing the habit of somebody you see it's caring it's nice good looking do you know what it does constantly repeatedly that you don't know find out find out his habit that is hidden from you find out her habit hidden from you what she does repeatedly do you know whether she keeps her clothes 10 years before she washes them and every day she comes she removes things i'm sorry let me just finish saying i've already started <laughs> sincerely i feel like on saying what i have said but since i've already started let me just complete so that i can move on to what if she comes back and removes things and drop and this one applies even more to men you see them they will wear things and then um, this one is dirty dirty means i've worn it three days remove it and keep it <laughs> take another one this one has, um three four days i keep it after some time because he has not washed it he comes back to the one that was removed seven seven days ago and he starts again and you see somebody well bedded very handsome and fine but smelly The day he wants to come and talk to you in order to impress you, he goes to his friend's house who has gone to work and he changes his into his friend's on this. <laughs> Find out what he does repeatedly. People's future are hidden in their habits. What they do automatically. Your spiritual future is your spiritual habits. What you do repeatedly. The next word is exercise. Let's look at 1 Timothy. I'm done. 1 Timothy chapter 4, 
verse 7 to 8. First Timothy chapter 4, verse 7 to 8. But reject profane and old wives' fables and exercise yourself toward godliness. For bodily exercise profits a little, but godliness is profitable for all things. Having promise of the life that now is and of that which is to come. Let's talk about exercise. The word exercise actually comes from the Greek word. <laughs> it comes from the Greek word gymnazo or gymnasium. Gymnasium. It is from that word that we have gym. Gymnasium. So I'm going to the gym. I'm going to the gym. The word gymnazo or gymnasium or gymnasia, gymnasia has to do with nakedness. It is from these that you can connect Olympics. Olympics is coming. So people who practice for Olympics, people who exercise for Olympics, and in the actual ex, you know, execution of Olympics, you see one thing, they are naked. In the ancient Olympics, people were naked. And it was all men's sports, games, and they were all naked. That is why in the, no matter in the Islam, Islamic people now come with their hijab and wearing stuff. They are breaking the original intention and calibration of Olympic because it's all about physical exercise. People exercise for four years to go and do, do perform for one day. So those four years, why is it called naked? It is exercising naked. It is doing physical thing naked on claret strip down what does that mean it means in exercise you let go so many things in order to achieve the fitness to attain a goal you have to let go so many things so in exercise it means stripping down things that are against the plan of your growth against the plan of your strength so you cannot talk about spiritual exercise and you are holding on to some useless fleshy things some useless emotional thing you you pray one minute and you think one hour you pray one minute and you fantasize 20 days and you have grudges in your heart and you have this worry and that so you are sitting in church as i'm talking to you so many many things are weighing you down why is he preaching for long by now i will have gone to do this i will have finished this and that it means you are not naked you are not stripped down you cannot fit into gold for somebody like that the devil will cross you so exercise is about stripping yourself it is about being stripped down of everything opposed to godliness it is about letting go of everything standing in the way of growing spiritually and in spiritual strength that is what spiritual exercise means that's why the scripture says for bodily exercise being naked to practice in gym repeatedly will give you biceps, give you broad shoulder, and give you seven packs, and make you strong to endure, and do marathon, and not faint. But godliness, godliness means the practice of God, the practice of godly things, the practice of godly ways, profitable for all things. That means what God is demanding for you to have the strength to resist the devil you have to come into the spiritual gymnasium gymnasia where you are stripped down of everything flesh stripped down of everything contrary to the ways of god contrary to the light of god contrary to the purity of god contrary to the holiness of god contrary to the strength of god until you are stripped down you cannot come up strong until you are naked of every uselessness you cannot stand strong what is it that you cover yourself with that is robbing you of strength the scripture says but reject profane and all wives fables and exercise yourself toward godliness it means strip yourself of every useless thing in order to practice godliness in order to practice the act of God the ways of God the character of God the desire of God the worship of God why you're coming to church does not help you is because you are not stripped down too many useless relationships useless practices 
demonic things uh, entanglements here and there debts uh, owing satan owing immorality owing profanity owing owing vanity so vanity tells you pay me my debt immorality tells you pay me my debt uselessness tells you pay my debt until you are stripped down stripped down of all these things before you begin to repeat that letter do God's work do God's ways do God's work do God's will and then you are strong strong in all to resist the devil rise to your fear I don't want to go into the last part of this teacher because there is no time say in the name of Jesus Christ say in the name of Jesus Christ father strip me say strip me strip me what are the things weighing you down say lord strip me what are the things weighing you down say lord strip me what are the things weighing you down say make me naked before you and the scripture says adam and eve were naked but they were not ashamed so when we are talking about nakedness here yeah, we are not talking about physical nudity coming to church nude walking around nude in your neighborhood i'm talking about being stripped uh, being stripped of immorality being stripped uh, being stripped of profanity being stripped uh, being stripped of dishonesty being stripped uh, being stripped of ungodliness ungodly entanglement uh, ungodly practices in order to repeatedly uh, do the work of God repeatedly fast fasting is not something of once in a year by the way we are embarking on seven days fast from tomorrow in GF system seven days of opening the gates from tomorrow repeatedly fast you must have your ways your days of fasting be seated today is not a day of prayer sit down bring out your exercise book take up your Bible Read down, write down five things you will repeatedly do every day, every week in order to build your spiritual strength. If you do it for one year, your life will change. Number one, practice prayer. That means prayer is not when it is convenient. It's a matter of praying when you should pray. Whether you like it or not. So number one, practice prayer. Practice prayer. Practice prayer. Practice prayer. Ephesians 6 verse 18, write it down. Ephesians 6 verse 18. Colossians 4 verse 2. Practice. Practice means repeatedly until prayer becomes automatic. Until you are in a bus, you are praying. You, pr you practice prayer. Practice fellowship. Fellowship coming to church to hear the word. To worship with others. To assemble with others in prayer meeting. In church service. In word study. In your group meeting. Practice fellowship. Acts of Apostles chapter 19 verse 8 to 12. Acts of Apostles chapter 19 verse 8 to 12. Even in Acts of Apostles chapter 4. Rather chapter, chapter. It should be in, in chapter 3. The scripture talks about in chapter 2 how the believers were de dedicated 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 acts of apostles chapter 2 uh, from verse 40 41 41 to 42 41 to 42 acts of apostles chapter 2 verse verses 41 42 especially verse 42 for they were continually devoting themselves to apostles teaching teaching and to fellowshipping they came together continuously that is a practice so coming to church is not because I, it's convenient it's, you know, I, I have enough money no it's about practice it's about practice of hearing the word another thing is practice service practice service service of God do something to honor God do something to honor God to love God First Timothy chapter 4, verses 13 and 15. Verses 13 to 15. Practice service. Practice service. Practice of the word. James chapter 1, verse 23 to 25. Practice of the word. Practice of the word. James chapter 1, verse 23 to 25. These are practices. Practices that you continually do them. You practice prayer. Have I told you that? You practice fasting. Have I told you that? You practice weekly fasting. Sometimes you just take seven days from today by the grace of God tomorrow unto next Sunday. Seven days of fasting in the prayer bell to open the gates 
the spiritual gates, a spiritual gate for overflow. God has not changed his mind. God told us this year you will overflow. It is a personal thing. If another person does not overflow, what stops you from overflowing? So we are lifting the gate. These are practices. If you practice this, another thing you have to practice is vigilance. You practice watching. Watching on yourself. Watching in prayer. Watching over your emotion. Watching over your relationship. At any point in time, you discover something wrong is going. It's going. You watch it. You cut it off. You're something, you know, just being sensitive and vigilance. First Peter chapter 5 verse 8. First Peter chapter 5 verse 8. First Corinthians chapter 16 verse 13. First Corinthians chapter 16 verse 13. Acts of Apostles chapter 20 verse 31. Acts of Apostles chapter 20 verse 31 these are practices if you practice this i talked about about four or five things uh, at least i'm sure of three now that you practice on a daily basis on a weekly basis no matter what happens you go back to it in one year your life can never be the same you can stand against anything that comes in the name of jesus christ this week as part of the assignment we are opening the gates of overflow so this is what we do in prayer belts. Take note, in the prayer belts, uh, rising between 12 midnight uh, until about 4 o'clock. Anytime you rise, you are connecting the house. You can pray anytime. But this is our general prayer this month. And we are, I mean this week. And we are fasting from tomorrow. Say, I fast. I practice fast. To build my strength, and you fast according to your strength. You can fast till 3 p.m., you can fast till 6 p.m., and it's daily from tomorrow till Sunday. You come fasting for miracle encounter at the communion. And the scripture is Psalm 24, verse 2, 7 to 10. Psalm 24, verse 7 to 10. And we are talking about now, from now on, is a declaration that your gates uh, shall be open. Your gates shall no longer be closed. Uh, your gates shall no longer be shut. So your overflow will come. We are talking about Isaiah chapter 60 and verse 11. This is it. If you stay in this this week and fast, you are practicing. And by practicing, after that strength will begin to come. If you continue like that, following instruction and practicing, strength will increase and increase and increase until you reach a point that what used to bring you down is afraid of you. It comes, but it cannot touch you. For the enemy comes, the prince of this world comes, but he finds nothing in me. He finds nothing in me that is of shame. Therefore, I stand, rise and say, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I let go everything, habits, way of life, relationship, action, practices, evil, sin, things of spiritual weakness. I let them go. In Christ Jesus, I turn to you. Jesus Christ, I accept you as my new life, my new strength, my new ability, my righteousness, my holiness, by your spirit, I practice your ways, I practice your truth, I practice your life. Say, I come alive in your strength, in the name of Jesus. All eyes closed, lay your hand on any part of your body. I take sickness from your body. I say, I take sickness from your body. I take accident from you. I take shame from you. I take disgrace from you. Whatever the enemy had planned to stop you from entering into the month of your rest, the month of your glory, the month of your over, new overflow opportunities, the month of open gates for overflow in July, whatever the enemy has done, I take it from you in the name of Jesus. I command the gates of your life before, from now till 12 midnight, the gates of your overflow shall be open in the name of Jesus. And as you walk into July, you shall walk through your open gates. Walk into your abundance. You shall overflow. Overflow in health. I speak as the gate is open. Let marriage come and meet partners. And let marriage come and meet singles. Godly marriage. Let promotion come in. Let holiness come in. Let salvation come in. Let increase come in. In the name of Jesus. Shout and bless in Jesus' name.